Martin Sala Esamba 5A. Go, and report what I have done for you. Chapter 5 My Rank and My Activities in the Realm of Satan After my induction as governor of the Temple of Great Britain, my life passed almost entirely in darkness. I lived a double life. Some days I could not go home. So I had to send a demon in my place that took my external form, my face, my character, all that concerned me. I sent him home to represent me to my fiancé, who believed that it was her fiancé who was with her. The devil spoke to her without any problem, as well as to my future mother-in-law, and to any visitor who might come to see me. Sometimes I spent several days without setting foot in my house. But there was this second Martin who was there in my place, that is, this demon. My power had already surpassed that of the hexagram, six-pointed star, which is the symbol of black magic, the most diabolical sign of all magic. Those who venture into the occult circle of magic unknowingly by going to treatments with healers, for example, not knowing that as soon as they have entered this circle, their soul goes directly into the circle temple of darkness to receive the mark of the devil, the 666. This mark remains invisible on their face and will manifest itself in due course. Many Christians receive this mark on their faces, those who have not confessed their sins of abomination before witnesses, and who have not received deliverance. Only the blood of Jesus can erase this invisible mark. Satan does not waste time. It has already begun to mark the face of all its followers but in an invisible way. Those who consulted the marabous or the healers before their repentance, but who voluntarily or involuntarily did not confess these sins, still bear this invisible mark, 666, on their faces. Confess then all your sins of spiritism, voluntary abortion, sorcery, drugs, murder, adultery, and fornication. All these sins open wide doors for demons. I must point out that it is necessary to confess them before witnesses, to cut the bridges and break the points of attachment, where the demons cling. After confessing these sins, you must ask for the deliverance of these demons, to erase the image of Satan on your face, 666. Only the blood of Jesus can do this when you confess your sins. Christians who die with this invisible mark on their faces pass directly into the abyss of Satan to be tortured. Brothers and sisters, pray and ask the Lord to sound your hearts, to show you the sins hidden by Satan. The devil will not let you do this cleaning. He will certainly conceal some sins and erase others from your memory, to maintain a bridge between him and you. His mark can never be erased if his demons are still in you. God is a God of truth. He, too, can never accept someone who eats at the table of Satan and at the table of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10:21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, and the cup of devils, you cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, and of the table of devils. So I officially took office in this temple of Great Britain. Bills was an excellent guide and often accompanied me to inspect the temple. The first department of the temple was reserved for the pamphlets and literature of the various sects of the world. The second department was reserved for demons, to study the body of a man, the memory of man, the fluid of a person. By these studies on man, the devil uses and deceives even the highest people placed in the kingdom of darkness. As the devil cannot read the thoughts of a child of God, he listens to his conversations to learn the different plans of this child of God, when he speaks with a brother or sister, for example. On the other hand, the thoughts and the memory of those who are not children of God are completely open to the devil and demons. It is in this great department that demons also learn the word of God, to deceive the world of sex and to make their members believe that they are truly in the presence of God. Even the true children of God are deceived by demons. Since they cannot read the thoughts of the children of God, 
they will be content to slip false reasonings into their thoughts. For example, in the case of a man of God who teaches the word of God, demons will attack that man by weakening in his thoughts the authority of the word of God or by distorting the teaching of the scriptures. Demons also impel some Christians to say that certain authors of the Bible, such as the Apostle Paul, preach certain customs of his time, or that God did not really mean what is written in his word, or that it means other than what is written. Without being able to read the thoughts of Christians, demons can attack them in many ways. They can suggest a thought, making you believe that this thought comes from the Lord. Even when you pray, you can hear a voice, and believe that it is the voice of the Lord. Many Christians are thus deceived by demons. Another department of this devil's temple has only one large unit of production of all sorts of items, especially cosmetics and medicines. These items are attached to demonic power. A single tablet can thus be charged with several demons, or an injection dose can be filled with demons, which will fight the one who receives it in all the phases of his Christian life, if he is a Christian if he is not Christian they will prevent him to know God. These are drugs that come on the market in presentations well known to the public. Most doctors and Satanist pharmacists know this and sell or prescribe these drugs much more than others. But the true Christian must know that he is above all these things. There are, of course, false Christians, who accept Jesus Christ for a particular interest, or who do not respect his commandments. But the true children of God enjoy extraordinary power, which purifies these medicines which are charged with all kinds of demons. This high technology, developed in the occult laboratories of Satan, is developed by demons, and by all those who died in the sex of Satan. This great department of the temple of Satan is essential to him to dominate the whole world by means of all these luxury products. These great laboratories of Satan work day and night. The Department of Satanic Technology extends over dozens, even hundreds of kilometers under the sea. The kingdom of darkness is so vast that no one can pretend to say that he knows all the depths of this kingdom even if he is a member of the government of Satan. No one can imagine that such a shabby building is the entrance to the temple of Satan. Many wizards go in search of this entry and do not find it. Many have even died in these attempts to want to know the depths of Satan without having any superior power. Satan is not kidding. No one can pretend to be his friend. All of them do not even know who Satan is. All small healers and small practitioners of witchcraft deal directly with the less powerful demons. Even though they have the ability to summon evil spirits, their power stops there. Even in the world of sex, followers of the Rose Cross, from the first degree to the upper echelon, are all deceived by little demons who cannot even approach their master, Satan. Even members of other sects, Jehovah's Witnesses, Friends of Man, Moonism, Witchcraft, Buddhism, Freemasonry, Voodoo, Islam, Christian Science, Children of God, celestial Christianity, to name but a few. The followers of these religions or sects are also deceived by the devil. They are ignorant. They believe they follow the true God or the true Jesus Christ. Satan created an incalculable number of sects, which by his demons diverted a large number of people throughout the world. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 1 that they are seducing spirits and Doctrines of Demons It is through these sects that Satan recruits the most employees for his laboratories under the sea and under the earth. Research is being carried out day and night in these laboratories to produce models of all kinds of apparatus, machinery, electronics, cars, aircraft, boats, weapons and other research objects by scientists. During my visit to the high-tech pavilion, in these underground laboratories, I was surprised when the demon in charge of this pavilion presented me with a very effective electronic spy equipment. 
some microphones that do not exceed. The size of a match head have a range of 400 meters. Telephones with a length of 20 centimeters can photograph a typewritten sheet at 200 meters. Satellites can, at 20,000 meters of altitude, film a couple on a bed by capturing the heat emitted by their bodies. Other techniques that I cannot detail. Here deal with brainwashing. Special rifles can shoot microscopic bullets through a window. Infrared laser beams can travel several kilometers, reach a targeted target, and cause a disaster. Special demons use the brain of several scientific researchers in the world. By these means, the devil thinks he can control the whole world. There is much more to say about cinema, television, and subliminal messages. Man becomes like a robot, without knowing it. Viewers cannot understand it. Even our governments do not understand it. The Bible tells us, the whole world is under the power of the evil one, 1 John 5:19. Many things I cannot talk about in this book will be unveiled in a future book. But I assure you that everything you hear about the arms race or the reduction of armaments is only a deception of Satan. No one can escape the grip of demons. All these heads of government or religious dignitaries who pretend to be servants of God, serve only Satan without knowing it or in secret. They cannot escape the clutches of the devil, which they do not even know. In this temple, there are also other departments where no one has ever penetrated, except the devil himself. Even the prime minister of Satan is deceived like the others. The Bible tells us that the devil is a liar, John 8:44. He is the father of lies. That is why, because he knows that man loves luxury, his jewelry, perfumery, and all kinds of clothing and luxury goods are found in his laboratories. In the shops of the world, whether held by Satanists or not, demons often replace items presented by identical items, but made in Satan's laboratories, and are full of ferocious demons. The replacement of these items can be done even in the presence of customers, who never realize that such a jacket or dress has been sewn in a satanic laboratory. In perfumeries, demons also replace beauty milk and perfumes. They remove the real milk and the real perfumes and replace them by satanic counterfeits bearing the same labels. All this so that the pagan world forgets God and those who are not in the sex adhere to it as quickly as possible. Driven by the power of these articles made by Satan, Satan prepares other terrible plans for the future battles he wants to wage against the Christians. Against all the countries which are not yet under the complete domination of the devil, and against the whole world. The devil uses two main sects to govern the world. The Rose Croix and Freemasonry, as well as false religions, such as Buddhism. In this same temple of darkness is the control screen where the plan of combat imposed by the devil is displayed to the leaders of the sex, that is to the demons of high rank who direct the sex. This control screen is directly connected to Lucifer's temple under the sea. This new plan of combat, which I was to have executed in this kingdom, is injected by the demons into the thoughts of the adepts of the sex. Here are some details about this combat plan. The first objective of the devil is to establish a single satanic religion in the whole world. Whether he likes it or not, every human being will have to adhere to one of the sects, which are only branches of this satanic religion. Each sect leader must exert his influence on the political leaders, kings, or presidents of the republic, so that they and their governments submit themselves to the supreme master, Satan. Remember that in the kingdom of Satan, the leader of a sect can only be a high-ranking demon, come in the flesh on earth to fulfill this mission. The armies of the whole world will have to be subject to the will of Satan, in order to overthrow any president or rebel leader in Satan's will. Only the kings or presidents who will follow the principles and orders of the devil will remain in power throughout the world. Satan is and wants to remain the secret king of the world of thoughts and suggestions. The ideas 
and suggestions of Satan must be seen by men as their own ideas and suggestions. They should not. Notice that the idea of an action does not come from themselves. Even those who are engaged in secret societies or Satanism should not know the final goal of each action. Politicians will have to be filled with all the riches and all the luxury possible in order to allow the devil to pursue his own objectives, which are to provoke economic crises to attract to him the people and all those who do not want to submit to its requirements. For this, the devil intends to withdraw from the circulation all the money of the world and to leave only a small quantity to his followers. Thus, states that are not yet under the control of the devil will be deprived of financial means and will turn to donors installed by Satan, to apply for loans. They will thus become entirely dependent on the devil. The devil wants to provoke economic crises and recessions such that the people struck by these crises will not support their leaders anymore. These people will be so tormented by difficulties of all kinds, by starvation, poverty and the powerlessness of their leaders, provoked by Satan, that they will be driven to demand a single world leader. Before that, it will be necessary that all the present sects unite to form one world religion so that the whole world worships Satan. The Bible had already foreseen it, and he said, The adversary, who rises above all that is called God or that which is worshipped, to sit down in the temple of God, proclaiming himself God, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. No one should have time to reflect, because each people will seek its own advantage. False peace. Treaties will be signed without hesitation. The people will set in motion, driven by distress and hatred. When Satan takes over the dominion of the world, he will not allow any other belief to exist. He wants to destroy all belief in a god other than himself. As soon as I returned to Edia, my work plan was established. I went twice a day into the kingdom of darkness, like a person who goes to work from one quarter to another. It was enough for me to enter my laboratory to leave immediately. I could come back to earth just to deceive those in my house so that they might feel like I knew what I was doing. When I was kept in the temple of Satan by the prince of demons, I was obliged to charge a demon to represent me to my wife, who was only my fiancée at the time. All my friends from Edia had the opportunity to greet this demon who took my appearance. Sometimes this demon pretended to eat with them. At other times, he had sexual relations with the multiple mistresses I had at that time. But this demon only did so with my consent. He could do nothing without my advice since I was his master. But this demon never had sex with my fiancé. The followers of the Rose Croix in Cameroon, who knew my position, came to meet me and Edia for their various problems. One day I received a surprise invitation to go to the temple of India. When I arrived, I was asked to pick up a folded paper, placed on a golden tray placed in the midst of demons that stood like statues. Bills told me not to bend to pick up this sheet, but rather to squat down. Suddenly, this paper took the form of the cobra, and the tray turned into a pool. I found myself in the middle of the pool with the cobra, who grabbed me by the throat. Bills told me to fix his eyes. After clearing his fangs from my neck, which had become harder than reinforced concrete, I seized the cobra by the neck, and gradually it became a young goddess. Bills asked me to keep staring at her. After a few minutes, this goddess was nothing but a cloud of smoke in my hands. My power diminished little by little. The pool was transformed into a cage, and the smoke resumed the shape of the cobra. There were no openings or holes in the cage. A few moments afterward, the upper part of this cage shattered, and a terrible power inundated me. A light accompanied by a flame came out of my eyes, which consumed the cobra in an instant, and destroyed some of the demons that were there like statues. The remains of the cobra, forming a powder, were mixed with a liquid, 
which I was told to swallow at a stroke. On my return to Edia, I was like a demon. The only difference between a demon and me is that I had a body of flesh created by God, which gave me a double power, whereas demons have not. That body of flesh. My only food was nothing but human flesh and my only brew of human blood. But in front of my future mother-in-law, I pretended to eat, without swallowing anything. In the kingdom of Satan, I was respected as the governor of the whole region of Central Africa. A region that disturbs the activities of the devil, and which includes in the first place Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, Central African Republic, Zaire, Nigeria, Benin, Côte d'Ivoire, and other African countries where Pentecostal churches are located. I tell you that if there is only one Pentecostal church in an African country, this country disturbs the world of darkness. All these countries are displayed on Satan's blackboard. The plan of the devil was to establish in Cameroon the fourth temple of his kingdom. This temple was to cover all of Africa in general, to better neutralize the true African Christians who pray in the name of Jesus Christ. At present, it is difficult for Satan to operate in the countries I have mentioned, unlike other countries where founders of religions have been venerated but who have died and who have not been resurrected. We have a living God who died on the cross, and who was raised on the third day, Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of this plan, the devil displayed to me a false love tinged with hypocrisy. He invited me into space to visit the whole world. He told me that he wanted to introduce me things I should know. He received me in the air and inspected the whole world. At the same time, he gave instructions to each legion of demons operating in a given area. You must understand that the whole world has been divided by the devil into sections. Each section is assigned a legion comprising billions of demons, commanded by a senior official of the devil's central government. Satan told me that my country, Cameroon, and the other countries of this region were disturbing all its plans for combat. I asked him what to do. He tells me, look, the whole world is under my feet. Everyone living in this world must submit to my will. Look what is happening under your eyes. I saw, and I saw a desolate spectacle, demons that put pressure on every human being, from the smallest to the greatest, from the boy to the boss, from the children to the parents, from the soldier to the general, from the simple village chief to the president of the republic. The whole world lay beneath this demonic domination. I saw whole churches extinct, dead, lifeless, full of demons. I saw so-called shepherds with demons. In churches awakened, demons watched for certain people who had not cut off the bridges with Satan. Other Christians, who had demons in them, entered the church with their demons. These demons blocked the ears of these people or made them sleep. During the preaching, the demons that were most numerous in all the churches were the demons of trouble, specially trained to disturb the awakened Pentecostal churches. They cause Christians to murmur, to jealousy, to slander, to pride, envy, and greed. Demons gather in churches during worship, I say, in the churches. If the name of Jesus is spoken during prayer, the devils deviate for a moment for the name of Jesus is a bomb. The demons who linger freely in the church cannot resist a simple prayer said in Jesus' name. Only the demons that inhabit the bodies of the persons present in church remain. The other demons return immediately to resume their place with rage, as soon as the prayer is finished. Demons fight Christians and push the pagans more and more to rebellion against God. During this space journey, the devil introduced me to other countries of the world ruled by demons. He told me that Central Africa must become like these countries. He showed me only two churches in Cameroon, which were really his black beasts, and wounded his demons. These two churches almost led the life of the early church. 
There were other similar ones in other countries like Gabon, Zaire, Congo, there were three in Nigeria. In these churches, even well-trained demons were afraid of being sent. Fearing to fail in their mission, and being severely punished by their master. Satan does not forgive. As we were inspecting the world, information came to the devil from his submarine temple. Human blood was diminishing in reserves. Human flesh was also lacking. Our return was precipitated by this bad news. The lack of human flesh and blood is often a catastrophic event in the world of darkness. Satan organizes all the conflicts of the whole world to have at all times food available to his people, that is to say, human blood and human flesh. Satan has already devised a plan to start a new world war. I say to you that Satan would like to inflame the whole world at one time if it were not prevented by the power of God. He knows that if he did, men would not have time to repent and accept Christ. That is why. Satan loves massive destruction. It also allows him to replenish his reserves. Satan triggered the Gulf War with the intention of lighting a world war and pushing the great powers to use weapons of mass destruction, to annihilate the whole earth in one go. The fate of the earth being in the hands of God, the Lord immediately stopped this diabolical plan. It is because of sin that the Almighty lets the devil maltreat men. The disobedience of men to the commandments of God places them under the dominion of the devil. This is how the devil organized the conflict between Iraq and Kuwait. Several million demons came into action. They result is known. Satan himself took matters into his own hands at the level of the coalition of the allies and the Iraqi president. The devil urgently called a conference under the sea, concerning this war. The most powerful demons were mobilized. I was one of the great personalities invited to this meeting. I had donned my golden enthronement. This was the first time I had attended such an important conference in the kingdom of Satan. I had already attended many meetings of regional interest, but never at such a large meeting. The audience consisted only of high dignitaries of the kingdom of darkness. The protocol service consisted of more than one million fierce demons. As I was still relatively unknown in the kingdom of Satan, two pretentious demons tried to bar me. I was preparing to show them my power, when my master arrived, and at once destroyed these two demons, because of this technical error. Satan does not forgive. The conference began after the arrival of the supreme master, the devil. I remind you that no demon can use the names devil or Satan. Before the speech of Satan, each regional or group leader had to present the difficulties he encountered in his field. Then Satan began his speech with a thunder of applause. He said, in particular in his speech, You know that I am the one who will soon reign in all the places you know, on earth and under the earth. Already 90% of the world is under my rule. We will soon snatch the remaining ten percent from the hands of this pretentious man who wants to take my place. Satan here speaks of the true God. These ten percent of the land that still escapes my control are only small points in Africa, Europe, and the United States. The whole world is in my hands. This time, nobody will escape me. Work hard. The time has come when I will put an end to this world. A world war must be triggered. You are doomed to do it, or I will be without pity for you. Being a heartless creature, the devil does not know pity. The supply of our reserves must be made as soon as possible. Use strong methods to accomplish this task, that is, to trigger the world war. We will direct the world and snatch from its throne this pretentious envoy of God, who is called. I do not know what a weak man whom I caused to be executed. Remember that Satan can never pronounce the name of Jesus Christ, and no one in his kingdom can do it. I will drive this band of pretentious men from the throne, and I promise you that there will be a time when I will let you rule the throne and rest in the twelfth heaven. 
these are only lies of Satan. The Bible tells us that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. John 8:44. You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and stayed not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. So I demand from all my troops that they put even more tensions in the homes, in the companies, and the governments. I demand the withdrawal of 50% of the banknotes in circulation in the world. Before this conference, he had demanded only the withdrawal of 30% of the banknotes. Form five battalions, one for each continent, special battalions for this war. Accelerate decisions. In the minds of those responsible, not just for the Gulf War. I repeat, set fire to the homes, the tribes, the governments. Even ignite small national conflicts and international conflicts for my glory. Multiply more and more road accidents, plane and train crashes, earthquakes. Sink boats, multiply the difficulties of everyday life, cause suicides. Get to work without waiting. Satan ended his speech with another applause. After the departure of Satan, it was his prime minister, who was my master, who had to stay to distribute the tasks. He entrusted me with the battalion of demons who were to work in Africa. Each African country was to receive billions of demons to accelerate these various tasks. Each chief had under his orders a large number of subordinates, who were responsible for every branch of human activity, to bring disorder and chaos. It is not for nothing that the Word of God asks us to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5:17. At the end of the conference, alliance pacts were signed. On my return to Edia, when I was talking to my master in my laboratory, at a late hour of the night, the driver of a bakery, who was returning from delivering bread, was thrown with his van to a nearby house. This man had wanted to see what was going on in my laboratory. He was projected in a few seconds by a diabolical power. The devil had turned his true course. This is what demons often do to kill non-Christians or false Christians. They deviate the true road in front of the driver, presenting him a false road. Perhaps that was what happened to the driver. Two tasks awaited me, the direction of the underground temple of Great Britain, and also direct the group of demons that were to work on the African continent. This special mission entrusted to me by the devil had its base in Sudan, although I myself resided in Cameroon. It was not possible to set up this base in Cameroon because Cameroon is a Christian country where true Christians recognized by Jesus Christ live and pray in the name of Jesus and not in the name of Mary or any other name. If you do not pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your prayer is dead. Those who pray in the name of Mary, Muhammad, Buddha, or any name other than Jesus, pray to the dead, which draws God's wrath upon them and opens a great door to demons. As Cameroon is a Christian country, the high-ranking demons who come from elsewhere suffered terribly, and their dark activities always fail because of the name of Jesus who is invoked regularly in this region. It is the demons that have come into the flesh, born in this country, who can best operate in such a region, having studied the times and the favorable moments for their operations. That's what I did myself every day. I had hours of exit and hours back for my multiple operations. My brothers and sisters, the power of Jesus Christ is real. At Edia, in my laboratory, I saw Terrible things concerning the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. I will speak about it at the end of this testimony. The Christian is truly clothed with the power from on high. The Lord says in Luke 24 49, I will send on you what my Father has promised, but ye remain in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Be truly sure, brothers and sisters, to be clothed in this power. The Holy Spirit that is in you effectively protects you from the attacks 
of Satan and demons. This base in Sudan, which served as a temporary temple, was a mosque, which we used at night. This base was the meeting point of all the leaders of the groups or battalions who worked in each African country. A single battalion had billions of demons, and each battalion had a leader. Each country was also divided into regions. To each region was assigned a group of demons under the command of a chief. All these regional chiefs obeyed the chief of the battalion of each country. These battalion leaders had to go to Sudan every night to give an account of their activities to the chief of the African continent, that is, to me who speaks to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak no more to you in the name of Satan, but in the name of Jesus Christ, of that God who came in the flesh that delivered me from the empire of Satan. One night, while we were gathered in this temple in Sudan, a demon from another group sneaked in to spy on us. While I was making my speech, his presence was pointed out to me by the service of the order. I threw it out of the room, and it was destroyed in a few seconds. The superior council of the devil administration protested, considering that this demon did not deserve such destruction. But from his submarine temple, the devil himself approved the destruction, saying that this demon was a spy he had sent to test my power. The work was seriously carried out in Africa, in all fields, not only in terms of international conflicts but also in national conflicts, within my country, Cameroon. According to the Master's recommendations, Satan, there was a need to increase the disorder in families and to raise the people against the ruling governments in all African countries. The main task of these battalions of demons was to inject evil thoughts to the people, to make them believe that the rulers did not govern well and that a change was necessary. The demons also made the rulers believe that they had only a handful of opponents because they were from one tribe or another, and so on. It had been years since the devil had begun to make such pressure. He knows that man cannot endure misery and that it is necessary to provoke a crisis in the world. To destabilize all governments, the devil has also introduced democracy, a diabolical system that actually prepares the world for a single government and a single religion, under the devil's command, of course. They rulers of the world do not know. They believe that the thoughts they receive come from themselves. Whereas it is Satan who injects these thoughts by means of his demons. Man knew the truth of God, the Creator, but he turned from his righteousness to follow Satan voluntarily. Men of the whole world boast of being wise, when they have become mad. Romans 1 professing themselves to be wise, they became fools.